Andrew Tate upsets Muslims. Wait, what? What happened? Let's have a look. As we approach the blessed occasion of Eid al-Adha, this year we have a unique opportunity to come together and make a significant impact on the lives of poor and needy children in Gambia. We invite you to join hands with us in this noble endeavor. Your Qurbani okay. donation will directly contribute to providing these essential meals. By contributing as little as 65 pounds, you can ensure that a Qurbani is performed and that the That's meat good. reaches these needy children in Gambia. Imagine the joy and relief your contribution will bring to a child and the immense reward you will earn in Jannah for this act of kindness. Insha'Allah. With Spot Project, Qurbani Campaign, let's make this Eid al-Adha truly special for the children in Gambia. Donate now. Link in the description box below. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are you aware that humor is forbidden in Islam? Wait, what? Islam is such a rigid faith that it forbids even light-hearted conversation and enjoyment. This is the common grievance voiced by an Islamophobe in public. That's that not Islam true. is so severe that humor is forbidden. No. That is both true and untrue at the same time. Though, how? Let's that is untrue because even our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to like enjoy humor and, and love with companions. Uh, like... That is not true. You will find hadiths about humor. You are allowed to actually laugh and smile. Smile is even sunnah, like seriously. Like you can have a little fun as well, right? Like you can play around with others, joke around with others. This is all halal. As long as you're not disrespecting or offending someone with it, of course. And untrue at the same time. Though, how? Let's look at Andrew Tate's most recent tweet in which he made an objectionable and profane remark while trying to be funny. Andrew Tate recently tweeted that he is the Lord and because of that one should bow down before him. While the tweet was not intended to be a call for shirk or disbelief as Tate seems to have written down as a mockery, Muslims did not take it lightly and were ready to criticize him for it. Nitizens blasted Tate, saying that such words should never be used by a believer. even. Oh, they're even pointing out Firaun here. Yo! In fact, uh, Pharaoh from the story of Moses alayhi salam proclaimed himself as Lord as well. Yo, you, you're not, you actually, no, like he's actually right. Like we Muslims have to be careful with that actually. Like I'm sure his attention was a different one, right? When he uh, wrote this, I'm your Lord thingy, right? Like uh, he, he had probably like different intentions, but of course there is going to be a misunderstanding when you say such a thing, especially if you're like a public figure and you reverted to Islam. Like everyone's ha having their eyes on you. So if you make like one mistake, you slip up one time, like everyone is going to see this. This is like the curse of being famous, right? Like if you do one mistake, everyone's going to look at you and put the finger on, like, on you, right? If you're like some, some random guy that's, I don't know, living next door right you're not a famous person but like the guy living next door like people are not really going to care because you're like a nobody right and you never shared it right like people don't even know you exist but if you're like a famous person and you make a wrong statement or something of course there's going to be a lot of drama going on like you get like cancelled even by like so many people easily like you have to be careful when you're like famous right never be used by a believer even if the individual does not mean it, yeah. it is considered a severe sin. The deputy editor of the British Muslim news website Five Pillars, Hussein, criticized Andrew Tate's tweet and urged Muslims to teach and educate Tate that such remarks, even in jest, cannot be spoken by a believer. He went on to say that because there are so many aspects of Islam that Andrew Tate needs to be enlightened about, Muslims everywhere should not blindly follow him. Of course, there are limits in Islam with regards to joking. A believer cannot just go around and utter whatever comes in his mind. Yes. Even if his intention was just to make people laugh. You have to have self-control. like I'm your Lord and bow to me express disbelief in Islam. Yeah. These are not considered to be light words for a believer. And one should refrain from speaking them. Um, about Andrew Tate, so if Andrew Tate, if you're watching this, there's my uh, suggestion for you. Try to befriend practicing Muslims. Like what I have seen with many reverts and even celebrities like Andrew Tate, that the problem is they don't change their environment when it comes to like the people they hang around with and their friend circle, like their closed ones, right? 
Like, if you have close friends that are practicing Muslims, this will benefit you. Like, look at Sneeko, for example. With who is Sneeko uh, hanging around, right? Like, he's hanging around now with uh, not only Sheikh Uthman, but also with uh, Ali, for example, right? And, like, he now hangs around with, like, other content creators that are making videos about Islam. He was even hanging uh, out with, with Ahi Amen, right? Like he was with Amen uh, during Ramadan even. So, th so this is the thing, right? Like if you are an individual that is a celebrity and you have your certain friends that you have around and they are disbelievers. If you are new on the Dean of Islam and you just reverted like a year or two years ago, you're not going to be that strong with your Iman. If you want to be a good Muslim and you want to learn about your religion and improve over time step by step, right? Like get into contact with good people that are role models in Islam, that are practicing the deen properly. And I'm not just saying this to Andrew Tate, I'm saying this to everyone that's watching my video right now that is new to Islam or just recently started practicing it. Watch those people around you that you hang around with and make sure that they are practicing Muslims. There is even a hadith where our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, made a very, very good comparison between a bad and a good company. The good company is like a seller of musk. Either he makes you have a nice fragrance, a nice smell, or he sells it to you, right? And a bad company is like like someone that is actually um, like like a blacksmith, someone that like uh, burns everything for the blacksmith, right? And you get either a, a, a bad smell from it or you burn yourself from it, right? So 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 you have to be careful what sort of friends you have. What are the people around you? Who are they? If they are individuals that are not on the Dean of Islam, even though you reverted and you have like, like a iman iman boost, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm so convinced about my faith. Over time, they're gonna drag you back down to disbelief if you're not careful. Like this is very very dangerous. Like when you revert, try to find good people. I was actually in a group of new Muslims and. Um, practicing again muslims and guess what we were like only seven people or so right and only me and one other guy is still practicing five people fell off the dean like we were either new like me i said the shahada some some other guy also said the shahada and some they were born muslim but their parents were wrong role models and they never really practiced also because of their upbringing and environment but when they started practicing we were put into this group together but from seven only Two, me and another guy actually really remained on the deen. The rest, Allahu Alam, what happened to them? We never saw them even in the masjid again. So, this is the thing like, you have to be very, very, very careful who you have as friends. Like, my story, my example with seven new or new practicing Muslims is just a hard reality because if people are coming to Islam or back to Islam, if they don't have that environment over the years, they're gonna, they're gonna get away from the right path again. It's sad, but it's true. Since they may even cause one to leave the Islamic faith. Yes, they are quite serious and weighty statements that many people say without giving them a second thought. Islam is not a religion that is against people having an entertaining time and enjoying themselves. But there are certain limitations and rules that one needs to be careful about when doing so. Jokes cannot contain any blasphemous yeah. or offensive statements that are considered offensive in Islam or against they Islam they cannot be made about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or any other Prophet they cannot satire any hadith or verse from the Quran they cannot involve lying, backbiting or slandering and last but not least they cannot be made with the intention of hurting another person also when someone makes such statements where he is asking the other to bow down shows that he thinks himself better than the other he assumes that he has a certain quality or feature that makes him better and more powerful than the other one. Yeah. Even if one thinks in this manner, then too, he is committing a major sin. A sin that was committed by Satan yeah, himself, arrogance. which is being arrogant and full of pride. Yeah. It is somewhat disheartening that jokes like May this, protect which us from this. I mean, their arrogance, or worse, are blasphemous, are so frequently made by Muslims. It's quite doubtful that Andrew Tate thought twice before posting the inappropriate tweet. To succeed on the Day of Judgment, a person must abide by certain laws yes. and guidelines when they join the Islamic faith. This is again what I said, his environment is just so bad. Like, 
Andrew Tate should be hanging uh, out with other like influential figures in Islam, right? Like, look what Sneeko does. I think Andrew Tate should get in touch with Sneeko and hang around like practicing Muslims because this will help Andrew Tate a lot. Like, like why cannot Andrew Tate hang around with Mufti Meng for a day or something and they maybe make a video about it or they have a conversation? Like, why can't he reach like certain figures that are also famous? Right, but that are practicing Muslims. Like I know about like so many creators and, and public figures that Andrew Tate could link and connect with, and maybe they they do some projects together with, spend some time with. Um, this is something I don't get. Like yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's personal. It's between him and Allah, right? Like he he accepted the faith not because of his surroundings, but because of his personal thoughts and, and feelings and how he experienced this life and what he knows about this life and the truth he saw in it right so it's out of conv uh, conviction right like oh i'm convinced this is the truth and that is good like mashallah like may allah protect and entertate i mean but a good protection is also your environment and, and I, I can see it clearly andrew tate doesn't have good influence around him unfortunately like he accepted islam and he came back to his old environment and he didn't change his environment that much, unfortunately. Like he, he needs to do what Sneeko does right now. That is the best way for him. If he doesn't want to hang around people that are not famous, then look for famous uh, figures uh, in Islam. There are others that are famous too and that are Muslim. Like Connect with them if you don't want to hang around normal people or something, right? Plus, I don't think that hanging out with normal people is a bad thing, by the way. Like, it doesn't matter if, if you're famous or not famous, because in front of Allah, we are all the same. Allah will not look in judgment day and how much money you have in your bank account. Allah will look at your deeds, right? So there are righteous individuals that are not as famous as Mr. Tate, right? But they are good in heart and good in, in conduct, character, behavior. They have beautiful akhlaq. Like, he can also be friends with them. Like... There are many good people you can be friends with. Like you have just to find them, right? But yeah, I highly recommend he should change his environment. Comic faith. Even if he was joking, a believer cannot let his tongue loose and say whatever comes to mind. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam, said, He who believes in Allah and the last day must either speak good or remain silent. It's very encouraging that a large number of Muslims spoke up to inform Andrew Tate who had published this insensitive tweet that this is not how a believer should behave. In Western culture, these kinds of remarks and jokes have become so commonplace yeah. that people often use really insulting language without Every, even yeah. realizing it. We hope that Andrew Tate applies the guidance and recommendations from the Muslims to his life and becomes a more mindful believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to the straight path. I mean. I mean. This year, give your qurbani with spot. Okay, let me give this one a thumbs up. It's actually interesting. I, I see, I see like a lot of like, I get like a lot of memories about like my my past, and like how I was like hanging out with some people that were new in the faith, right? And then they got out of Islam because of their environment. Like this is so dangerous for reverts. If as a revert you don't change your environment. Like you, you can get out of of the deen. This is very, very scary. But I've seen this in reality: how people stopped being a Muslim because of their environment, and or how they commit major sins. Right? Like a lot of sins that Muslims these days, especially in the West, commit. Like, sure, you could say, oh, everyone's responsible for their own actions, they have free will. But but guess what? Your environment plays a big role because your environment is also connected with shaitan, right? And the whispers of shaitan, if you have a bad environment, they're going to be even way stronger than if you have a good environment. And there's so much fitna around you, so much temptation, and it will call you to do um, bad deeds. And now about halal jokes. Um... Let me find some jokes actually for you right now that are halal and that you can make in daily life. For example, you're having dinner or lunch with a friend and for some reason the dish has a lot of carrots in it, right? You can make such joke by saying, oh, I actually love carrots, but the problem is I've read that if you eat a lot of carrots, you're gonna get like uh, orange skin. So I have to be careful or I, tell to st or I turn into some alien after eating too many carrots or something. I know it's a, it's a, it's a dumb joke, but it's, it's funny, right? Some, to some people maybe. Or another joke is, yo, if I keep eating more, 
I'm gonna look like a pregnant man or something. Like, you can make some very strange jokes even about yourself where you put yourself down as long as you don't disrespect or hurt so somebody else, right? Or you can actually make a compliment to someone that is also that is also a, a, a joke sometimes, right? Like, for example, you see a brother in the masjid and this brother is, is working out and maybe you see this brother made some gains. So another halal joke would be you see this brother and, 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 and you say to him, oh, mashallah, nice muscles. Soon you're go soon you're gonna reach Arnold Schwarzenegger level with those with these biceps like whoa <laughs> or something like that like there are halal jokes where you even compliment someone and you maybe compare them to uh, like a, a athlete that has like a lot of muscles and you're gonna be on that level or something and you just gonna laugh at it or something right like there are halal jokes you can make like it's not forbidden to make jokes in islam but you have to be careful what type of jokes you make if you compare someone's muscles to arnold schwarzenegger and everyone laughs about it you did not put that individual down and maybe you even motivated that individual maybe this individual thought oh i want to have muscles like arnold schwarzenegger or something right like <laughs> Like oh, like there are like some some really good jokes you can make sometimes. And, and they are actually halal, right? Or about food and this and that, right? Or oh, this food today is so spicy. I feel like I'm turning into a dragon and I can breathe fire soon or something, right? Like there are like some jokes that maybe some people will find funny, but you don't put anyone down even. But yeah, change your environment if you're a revert Muslim. This is my best suggestion i can give you if you are like unsure about your faith especially or you're already feeling like you're getting away from it or your iman is decreasing seek the company of good people because even our prophet muhammad wasam, suggested this in several hadith not only this one where your company can give you a good smell or you benefit from them right and a bad one can give you a bad smell and you can burn yourself with it like the hadith i mentioned earlier or even where it says that you are just like the company you have like you because there's a hadith for our, also our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi was, was salam, suggested us to have a good company because uh, he says that those that are your friends like your close friends those are the ones you're gonna follow so be careful who you have as good friends because they're gonna have some influence on you there are several hadiths you can look them up and what i've noticed from myself for example when I distanced myself from my bad friends back in the day that were like drinking, smoking, doing a lot of bad stuff. When I distanced myself from such people, I noticed that my Iman actually increased. Like it definitely did benefit my, my practice in Islam when I got away from like a bad environment. That's why I highly recommend this to all new Muslims or those that started practicing. Make sure you have a good environment. It's my best advice for you. But yeah, guys, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time, inshallah.